Thank you, Darius. My name is Alex Samanti, and I'm the Director of Technical Architecture at Fortinet. Today, I'm going to be showing you Zero Trust Network Access with FortiOS. That's composed of the Forti Client, the Forti Client EMS server, and the FortiOS Universal Zero Trust Network Access Proxy. We will also be integrating with the Forti Authenticator for SAML Identity Access Management Services. This diagram shows our setup. We have two users in the Green Engineering Group, Ron Smith, who is working remotely from a cafe, and Mark Hall, who is working from an office. We also have two users in the Blue IT InfoSec group. Rob Nitz is working from home, and Katie Scott is working from the office. No matter where the users are, they will get the same experience when accessing resources via the Forta client that is installed. This aligns with Fortinet's work from anywhere philosophy. The data center can be on-prem or in the cloud or wherever. This is where the resources we will be accessing are. The ENG tools site can only be accessed by the engineers. Similarly, the Forta Analyzer and the Splunk server can only be accessed by IT. And then the Forta Tester can be accessed by both. At the center of it all, we have the FortiOS Universal ZTNA Proxy. This is a built-in component of FortiOS. It will be controlling access to the resources. And finally, we have the Forti Client EMS. This communicates with Active Directory to continually verify the identity and trust status of individual Forti Clients. It communicates to the FortiOS Access Proxy to provide a total zero trust solution. From our EMS dashboard, we can see that we have four managed devices which have FortiCline installed, two that are on fabric and two that are off fabric. Here we have our policies for determining if any FortiCline endpoint will use a particular profile. This also includes if they are on fabric or off fabric. The endpoint profiles control how the client will enforce certain security, like malware scanning, sandboxing, and vulnerability scans. In this particular case, we have malware protection enabled. For web filtering, we are blocking liable as well as some adult content. For firewall applications, we're blocking game and social media, and we are monitoring proxy and allowing everything else. Finally, we're doing a vulnerability scan when we first join the network, and we automatically patch any critical vulnerabilities. Now we have our Zero Trust tags. These are how we determine what type of capabilities we want to share with the FortiGate so it can enforce Zero Trust policy. We can use granular rules to decide if an endpoint meets a characteristic. Here we see for the IT InfoSec tag. They need to be part of the IT InfoSec group. They need to be logged into the domain tmg.local. And they need to have antivirus enabled. Now that other one was a pretty simple Active Directory group check. But we can also do more admission control type logic. Here we are checking for BitLocker as a process to see if it's running. And we will also see if Windows thinks it is enabled. There are many types of checks we can perform and all of the different characteristics we can have, and we can create specific and or logic that will help us fine tune the access we need. Tags do not need to be mutually exclusive. A person may be part of the IT InfoSec group as well as the vulnerable group because their vulnerabilities may be too high. From here, we will move to the FortiGate to see how the Zero Trust Access policies will allow us to create segmentation based on the endpoint policies, as well as applications based on NGFW policies. The dashboard gives us an overview of what is happening on the FortiGate, including the status of connected Forti clients. Here we can see all the different tags the EMS is sending to the FortiGate. All of these tags can be used to create policy. We can see some of the tags that we have created ourselves, as well as a number of the built-in tags that come from the EMS. If we look at this tag, we can see what it resolves to. These tags help us create policies for access. The ZTNA servers are the resources we're exposing from our internal protected networks.
Since these servers' networks are available from anywhere the client can be, we need to make sure we're only allowing specific resources. We can map whole servers or only specific resources uh, via the URL. If the server supports SAML, we can use an external identity provider to provide single sign-on to the resource without having to enter credentials multiple times. The ZTNA rules control how different users can access these resources. These rules will match the source and the ZTNA server along with whatever ZTNA tags are required to access the resource. Much like a firewall policy, you can configure the source and destination to match only what you want. You can use multiple ZTNA tags, or you can specify all or any of them. You will also define any security inspection you will want to do for this specific resource. Much like the NGFW policy, it's as granular as you want, so you're only applying the security you want for the resources you require. Now let's take a look at some of the Zero Trust access in action. We have a few clients we can remote desktop to in order to see how ZTNA will work. The first one is for Rob. And we're going to open the Forta client and see what it says. We can see that he's off net from the status, but he is logged into the domain and he already has an IT infosec tag. We can see that he has malware protection enabled, just like the EMS policy shows. And we saw on the EMS IT off net profile for the web filter options, we were blocking potentially liable and some adult and mature content. For the application firewall, it's blocking games and social media, but monitoring proxy. And Rob does not have the vulnerable tag. That was because it was only for critical and high vulnerabilities. So now we'll look at some of these resources we've mapped to different users and tags. I'm trying to load four different sites. We can see that it's asking me for a client certificate. This is because we are validating every connection to make sure they are who they say they are. The client certificate is issued by the EMS when a client first connects. That way we can correctly verify the identity. ENG Tools is only accessible to the engineering group. But for the Forti Analyzer, once we present our client certificate, we are allowed. Now we're offering the cert every time. It's only asked for the first time you connect to a resource, but you can automate the issuing of the certificate, which I will show a bit later. The Splunk service does offer SAML integration, so it logs me in directly without me having to enter my username or password because my authentication status is passed on via SAML. And the 40 tester is something both IT and engineering have access to. So now we will take a look at Ron. If we look at his Forta client, we can see that he is off net from his status, but he is logged into the domain and he is part of the engineering group and has the engineering zero trust tag. Similar to the IT profile, he has some of the same things blocked as well, but also security risk. On the application firewall, he is also being blocked from going to proxies and the vulnerability scan shows that he has no current vulnerabilities. With Chrome, I've automated the cert acceptance. This can be done simply if you only have one cert, or if you have more than one cert, you can create policies to decide when you're using one or the other, or you can just choose from the list. So unlike Ron, Rob is in the engineering group and does have access to the engineering tools site. but he does not have access to the 40 Analyzer or Splunk. But the 40 Tester both groups have access to. Now we will take a look at Mark. Mark is running an old version of Windows that does not have up-to-date security. 
there are also a number of vulnerable applications installed which have known problems. We can see that Mark is on Fabric, which means he is an, in an on-prem network. He also has the engineering tag, but in addition, he has the vulnerable tag. Only the critical and high vulnerabilities contributed to the vulnerable tag as we defined in our EMS server. For many vulnerabilities, you can fix them right on the spot. We can also see vulnerabilities that have been caused purposely by adding some vulnerable applications, which the Forta client can pick up on. Here we can see how the vulnerable tag has been included in the list of tags the client has. And this client has been denied access to all resources because of zero trust. Finally, we have our last client, Katie. She is on-prem and in the IT InfoSec group. So she should have the same access as Rob, who was off Fabric and in the IT InfoSec group. So here we can see that Katie is on Fabric and has the IT InfoSec tag. And if we go back and look at Rob, we can see Rob is off Fabric and also has the IT InfoSec tag. Now, if we look at what access Katie has and what access Ron has, we can see that they're the same. Neither of them can get to the ENG tools. Both of them can get to the Forti Analyzer, Splunk, and the Forti Tester. Now we will head back to the FortiGate to see how the ZTNA access logs look like. We can see each user's access to the different resources we've defined. We can see when our vulnerable client, Mark, was not allowed to access any resource. We can also see when the engineers were not allowed to access to the IT resources, and we can see when the IT InfoSec people were not allowed to access the engineering resources. And of course, we can see when all of the users were allowed to access the resources. Now I'm going to show you FortiSassy, Fortinet's cloud-based secure remote access solution, which enables secure internet access for SaaS applications. The components of FortiSassy are almost the same as ZTNA, except the Forti OS is replaced with our cloud-based managed service. FortiSassy, together with ZTNA, provide a complete SASE architecture for our customers. This diagram shows our setup. It's almost the same for ZTNA. We have two users in the green engineering group. We also have two users in the blue IT InfoSec group. We will focus on Rob Nitz in IT, who is working remotely from a cafe and Ron Smith in Engineering, who is working from home using our Thin Edge 40 extender. At the center of it all, we have FortiSassy. FortiSassy runs the same FortiOS that is in our appliances, and it will be controlling access to all internet-based resources. No matter where the users are, they will get the same experience when accessing resources via FortiSassy. FortiSassy is designed for remote users and thin edge customer locations that can be sent to our firewall as a service cloud. As we can see, there are multiple clients connected to FortiSassy. We can see the overall security status via custom dashboards that can be created for each admin user. Because FortiSassy combines endpoint, EMS, and network security, we can see the vulnerability summary for all of the connected endpoints as well as the configuration and alerts of the network security, which is FortiOS. FortiSassy has the EMS server built in as a cloud service. Here we have the Manage Endpoint Profiles. The endpoint profiles control how the client will enforce certain security like malware scanning, sandboxing, and vulnerability scans. FortiSassy works together with ZTNA and ZTNA tagging and should mirror what we saw in the ZTNA configuration. These are how we determine what types of capabilities we want to share with FortiSassy so it can enforce zero trust policy. We can use granular rules to decide if an endpoint meets this characteristic. 
Here we see for the IT InfoSec tag, they need to be logged into the domain tmg.local. They need to be part of the IT group, and they need to have antivirus enabled. Now that other one was pretty simple Active Directory group check. But we can also do more admission control type logic. Here we're checking for BitLocker as a process to see if it's running. And we will also see if Windows thinks it's enabled. There are many types of checks we can perform. All of the different characteristics we can have can create specific and or logic that will help us fine tune the access that we need. Tags do not need to be mutually exclusive. A person may be part of the ENG group as well as part of the vulnerable group because their vulnerabilities may be too high. Here is how we link FortiSASE with individual FortiGate universal ZTNA proxies. This is what allows them to share tags and ZTNA resources. I already have a bunch of traffic already flowing through this setup. As we can see here, people are doing a lot of TLS 1.3 traffic. Our application identification can provide this visibility without decrypting. Here we have the configuration of the security for FortiSASE. We can configure AV, web filter, and if we look in the web filter, we can see that we are blocking potentially liable, including proxy avoidance, as well as some adult and mature content, like pornography. And now we also have configuration um, security profiles for IPS, DLP, DNS, app control, and TLS inspection. After all, it's just 40 OS under the covers. But what we're going to do is turn on TLS inspection so we have further visibility into what is going through FortiSASE. Now when we look at the traffic again, we can see that we see the TLS 1.3 traffic being decrypted. With this visibility, we can now see all the malware that was hiding inside the encrypted sessions. Looking at the antivirus, if we go back, we can see that the non-encrypted HTTP sessions, we saw that there was some fairly benign malware, some, some adware and a couple riskware, but now that we've turned on the TLS inspection, we can look and see that we have the TLS 1.3 HTTPS traffic decrypted. And now we see all of the malware that was hiding in the encrypted connections. Now let's take a look at FortiSASE in action. We'll get on the console of the client that Rob Nitz is using. And if we take a look at the Forta client and see what it says, we can see that he's on net because he's connected to FortiSASE now. And he's logged into the domain and already has the IT InfoSec tag and endpoint compliance. We see that he has malware protection enabled, just like the EMS policy shows. And Rob does not have the vulnerable tag. That was because it was only for critical vulnerabilities. We can see that ENG Tools is still blocked because of our ZTNA configuration. Now we will try to go to some sites that we have blocked on FortiSASE. Here we can see that FortiSASE has blocked this connection because our cloud policy said to block proxy avoidance. And if we look at this site, we can see that it was blocked because we blocked pornography. Now we will take a look at Ron Smith. Ron is connected to FortiSASE using our thin edge via a Forti extender. If we try to go to the same web pages, we are blocked here as well via our cloud configuration in FortiSASE. I hope you've learned how Fortinet's FortiSASE works and how it's complementary to Fortinet's existing ZTNA universal access proxy. And I want to thank you for your time and attention.